Hello there geographers and welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. Today we're going to start things off by practicing some good old photo analysis. To start, see if you can figure out where this place is just by looking at the photo. As always, remember if you find value in this video, consider subscribing and check out my other resources in the description down below. When looking at the photo, perhaps you notice that this place has people clustered together with little to no space between people. Or maybe you notice that both men and women are wearing modern clothes. Right away you probably notice that you you are looking at a market, but did you notice the modern city skyline in the distance? If you did, you probably concluded that this market is near or in an urban area. If you look at the goods that are being sold, the types of buildings or the clothes people are wearing, you could come to the conclusion that this place is located in a more economically developed area. And if you turn your attention back to the signs in the market, you can see the red lanterns and probably notice that the signs are in Japanese. All of this may lead you to believe that this place is located located in Japan, which is in fact where this photo is from, Tokyo, Japan to be more exact. Now not only were you practicing photo analysis, but you were also making observations about the cultural landscape. The cultural landscape is made up of different cultural, economic, and physical elements that define a landscape. When looking at the cultural landscape, you want to look at society's land use pattern, which is how land is changed in order to be used for a specific purpose. Remember there are a variety of different land use patterns that we can observe. Each land use pattern allows us to better understand what society values. Going back to the cultural landscape, we can see it is also made up of different types of architecture that is present, such as traditional architecture or modern architecture. The different economic opportunities, the different cultural components that can be seen in the landscape, such as the religions or languages that are present, the physical features of an area, or any evidence of sequent occupancy, which is how cultures over time have impacted a geographic location. Essentially, through Throughout history, how have people left their mark on a geographic area? Sequent occupancy helps create a unique cultural landscape and a unique sense of place. Now, when talking about the cultural landscape, I mentioned traditional and modern architecture. Traditional architecture uses resources from the local area and incorporates the local culture and resources of the area. Modern architecture, on the other hand, focuses on function over design and does not incorporate the local culture into the design. One other type of architecture that you might hear about is postmodern modern architecture, which is a style of architecture that strives to create a unique look that incorporates local culture into the design of the building. So we can see that the cultural landscape is made up of a bunch of different parts, but the real question is, what does all this really mean and why does it matter? Well, when observing the cultural landscape, we can better understand how a place is unique and gain insight into a society and the people that live there. When geographers analyze the cultural landscape of a place, they look to see what spatial patterns exist, how they change across different regions, and how the society shapes its local environment. By analyzing the cultural landscape of an area, we not only better understand how the culture and people have shaped the area, but we can also gain insight into what a society values. Sometimes we can even learn more about a place not by looking at what is present in the cultural landscape, but by observing what is not present. Here, let's take a minute and practice. Take some time and analyze this photo. What do you notice? What observations can we make? make about this place and the people that live there. Just like at the start of the video, we are looking at a market, but right away we can notice that this market is in a very different area. The market does not appear to be in an area that is as economically developed as our first photo. We can notice that the men and women are dressed differently. Women are wearing more traditional clothes, while some of the men are wearing more modern clothes. The women in the photo have hijabs on, which may lead us to believe that the dominant religion of the area is Islam. When looking at the street, we can see a lot of mopeds and older cars. We can also notice that there are no new cars or no expensive cars, which may point to the area has less access to wealth. We can also notice the signs on the building and the writing on the cars show that English is not the primary language of this area. If we turn our attention back to the market, we notice a variety of umbrellas and palm tree leaves on the roof, which indicate this area is located in a warmer climate. When looking at the market, we can also see that the people selling the food at the market are women and children, which may indicate that the society has more traditional gender roles, with women and children participating more in jobs that are related to agriculture. Speaking of the food, we could look at the fish and notice that they're not being sold in freezers and do not have anything to keep them cool, which may indicate that the area does not have much access to wealth. This photo is actually from a market in Indonesia. Now, one thing to remember when trying to analyze the cultural landscape through photo analysis is we are only seeing part of a society. Our view is limited, so it's important to remember 
remember that when we are making inferences about a society, they're just that, inferences. To fully understand a culture and a place, we will have to do more research and get more information to truly understand the people that live there. And just like that, another topic review video is done. Now comes the time to practice. Take some time and try to identify the different components of the cultural landscape in this photo. Also remember, if you need more help with your AP Human Geography class, don't forget to check out my ultimate review packet and subscribe. The packet has everything you need to get an A in your class and a five on that national exam. As always, I'm Mr. Sin. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time online.